Hello, it's time to wait. Um, in this video, I would like to show you how my team from some paternal ways achieved uh, Kain's Aegis speedrun hard mode no death trifecta achievement uh, for Dunbringer title. Uh, you can look at the support setups for Trash, DK tank is in uh, Defile Dragon and Alkosh for AoE penetration. Uh, Warden of tank is running Yoln and Alkosh, again extra penetration and minor courage. Our uh, Templar healer mm -hmm. is in Spell Power Cure and Warm. She later on switches to Gossamer for more dangerous fights. And I was supposed to be running Catalyst and Master Architect, but somehow I get stuck in Jorvald for that particular night. I don't know how, but uh, so we didn't have Catalyst in Trash, unfortunately. We are utilizing four horns and three Colossi in Trash. If you um, build appropriately, you could probably get away with two Colossi in Trash. Um, but in our team, we were not super sweaty about it, so we just went with like a simpler, easier setup since it's the first Dunbringer achievement for many people in the group. And that's why we have uh, four horn and three Colossi in Trash. General approach that we took for Trash would be Basically, block dangerous attacks such as Wrath of Tides, and uh, later on when we see a bunch of uh, infusers mm -hmm. as well, just uh, yeah, block cast there. Make sure to stay on your feet when you have the lightning strikes, don't overstack, don't bunch up together, not to kill one another with those lightning strikes, you can see them already appearing over here. Tap target bulwarks so they die faster and don't shield anything. If there are two bulwarks in the pack, we will stack them together, tap target one, try to nuke them. If they don't nuke fast enough, then uh, our off tank, warden off tank will take away her bulwark and we would finish whatever rest is remaining and then finish her bulwark separately. Generally, you can see how here there's a lot of lightning strikes, right? And we're trying to make be on our feet and be separated. When the Wrath of Day is coming up, our main tank would call it and say block. And we would have to block. If there are two block. Wrath of Tides, you would roll dodge and hold block button at the same time to make sure that you don't die to that type of uh, combination. And pretty much just stay on your feet, uh, be aware, and uh, don't die to those dangerous mechanics. This is the first boss, uh, boss Yandir, the butcher. Uh, here uh, here so setups far. change a little bit. Our Maybe DK tank is targets. in the Yoln and the Warm. Uh, Warden of tank is semi DPS and catalyst and PEA. Templar okay. healer is guarding our main tank and she Stick is in spell power now. cure okay. and, and um, MK and I am in Jorvald a raw but in a dps setup so majority of healing is picked up by a templar healer she's pumping up all the heals uh, while uh, our off tank and off healer are doing dps we went with three horn and three colossus and this does not give us a hundred percent volume or force up time in here because this fight can consists of two uh, phases and it's very important to skip the very first griffon because if you get to skip the griffon then yes. fight becomes uh, like significantly easier than if you were not to skip that griffon and it's very like um, important for you to make that push so to get that push we would just allocate three horn three classes and the remaining the cross Upset. using uh destro alti Upset. to get just initial get burn just. and to push him fast enough we would also, if we would get any kind of totems during that first 50% burn phase, we would just ignore them. For example, Charles totem only speeds once in about 30 seconds, so uh, we would just even ignore Charles totem. We would unstack, purge one another, roll dodge the Charles totem OE, OE, the poison OEs, and just like leave it there. And we would only focus totems once we got the skip. And then if it's like one of those dangerous totems that are not uh, stuck near the boss, like this gargoyle totem, we would focus. But if gargoyle totem were to spawn at about 15% of boss's health, we would ignore it. Here you can see the most important part here is not to kill one another with meteors. I put the diagram of how to stack earlier so you can see the general stack. Uh, For me, okay. important part is to find the target that I'm heavy attacking. So if boss is jumping, he sometimes jumps up and disappears from your targeting. 
so you can just turn around and find a shaman to heavy attack or something like that. Um, I get pretty good up times on empower here, even though I cannot cover the entire stack with one empower cast, but because I'm on draw vault, empower is increased in time, and so I get pretty good empower up times even with the setup like this. Okay. So this is the next, next uh, trash pack here. It's also all the giants, so they are not vampires yet. Um, basically same approach as before, just the target bulwarks, luck. Here we have two rack of tides coming up, so we would roll dodge and then hold block button right after, just in case, to make sure to survive. Same here, uh, three class A, four horns. Nuclear and basically and it's a very similar approach to the first uh, trash pack a set of trash packs oh, this is the two bulwark again bulwark. in here there's two bulwarks and one shaman was stacking both the bulwarks on that shaman as soon as bulwarks shield uh, we will separate them uh, usually if your setup is correct they wouldn't have chance to shield like we see here they didn't manage to uh, drop the shield circle so it just burned fast um, next okay, pack next already has uh, the uh, storm color that produces the shock AE, so you have to be careful. If you avoid the shock AE throughout the entire fight, the ones that are during the trash packs, not the ones that are during the boss fights, you would get that lightning reaper achievement that is required for Dunbringer. So try to just basically avoid it, stay on your feet and move out of them. Be very, very like um, agile in this particular fight. Uh, set of trash. Once you kill the storm caller, the CLE stop hitting you. So this is the storm caller that you need to target in order to get rid of them. And also those storm callers serve as a gate for the boss. Um, Please for the boss uh, doors. So if the storm caller is up, you cannot go through the door. Once storm caller is down, you can open the door. So that helps you to get lightning leaper for the rest. Uh, of the team because if they didn't get it by the time you got the, the no death speedrun hard mode you could just uh, skip majority of the trash hey, kill the so storm callers go through the door and pull them into the fight and get achievement for them that way so this is captain roll this fight is also kind of consists of several phases here we use pretty similar uh, gear setups but our main tank switches his setup a little bit he puts uh, immovable because there is an attack um, called Frigid Cold right, that well, that immobilizes him. Uh, so if he doesn't use immovable, yeah. he might like not oh, move, uh, roll out of that attack fast enough because it's immobilizing. And if he uses immovable, he doesn't get affected by it. So it's uh, making that fight easier. In this particular fight, there are uh, portal phases that uh, summon the adds from the boat. And there is the add on the boat that is responsible for summoning them. So what we do is we send one person in the portal and we send one person to shoot Ballista. We use Jorvald a raw of healer to shoot Ballista because as you can see, I went up, shot it. As I come back down, a raw is due to be reapplied. So it kind of aligns very nicely. And that makes it best of the two worlds. Our DD comes out of the portal very, very fast. He is a night blade, so he can just execute. Uh, because Ballista takes away yeah, half of the health of the um, ad on the boat and then he just reapplies his dots and then ready to be executed. We we'll also use three horn three colossus in here, even though we don't get full coverage, that's enough for us to um, uh, do the two minute fight. So for the achievement that was like plenty enough for us, we were like, that's a good time, we don't need to go any faster. So just three horn three colossus was enough. In addition, we discovered that we would consistently skip the second boat, second portal phase, but when we were to skip it, the meteors would come out very early in the fight at about like 40% of boss's health. And at the same time, there would be this conduit mechanic that you just see right now. You need to stack closer to the boss to place that conduit close to the boss so it can be cleaved and nobody needs to tap target it. It makes it die much faster and it's just much safer. But if you have meteors at the same time, while you're stacking, you get hit by meteors. And it's super like dangerous to deal with those meteors, and that's what was killing us the most. So we discovered if we get the second boat, while the boat is up, we push boss all the way to like maybe 20 
like 20 percent of health or whatever and then meteors don't come up as early and it was safer for us to not use the ultimates at the start and attempt to skip that mechanic so that we don't have to deal with meteors and conduit spawning at the same time another tip about that conduit is that once the boss hits 50 percent conduit only spawns after storm twin spawns so basically you have to call for stack for conduit not at the usual 40 seconds ish but uh, not the 40 seconds, then wait for twin to spawn, and that's when Conduit uh, will come up right after, because that's a kind of cues after the storm twin spawn. So this um, um, this uh, part of the trial already has a lot of um, vampires instead of giants, so you would switch to your uh, prismatics instead of uh, other enchants and use them. All of those vampires they themselves kind of blow up with those AOEs, as you can see on the ground, and they would also yeah, cast AOEs yeah, yeah, on that, people. So again, here it's very important not to overstack and not to bunch up together, be on your feet and like literally try to block cast everything because those AOE hurt. If you don't block, you die. If you stack together and more, more than three of them come up, and even if you block, you could die. So like be on your feet, don't stack together and block cast to ensure that you don't die because they kind of animate very quickly so it's kind of hard to react on time and basically our rule of thumb was just block cast i just called block 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 block, block consistently in those particular fights um and that's how we get past that uh, pack we start saving ulti after first pack of those uh, me as i'm a necro and one other necromancer can use ulti on a second pack after roll and we would get our ultimates back for last pack but the remaining of the dds they just save ultimates they could use them after roll in the first pack but then afterwards they need to save ultimates so very last trash pack because that one is the most dangerous here as you can see there is a mechanic where um the knight the vampire knight would put somebody in prison and you're supposed to free them out of the prison but if you kill the knight before that prison disappears there's a bug where if knight casts the prison and it's it's like a projectile and if it's in the air and didn't hit the target yet and he dies prison doesn't go away so keep an eye on that and if prison stays you have to focus it but generally if you have enough of dps you wouldn't have to focus the prison you will just burn the knight there are a bunch of infusers in those trash packs as well so deep breath helps a lot we would put deep breath on our dk zen dk and she would just like wave deep breath as you would wave um plus bones every like third cast basically would be deep breath and she would interrupt all of them all at once which is great here this is a very large trash pack it has a blood nine that does um those cross mechanic um that would hit quite hard if you block it you survive but it's also possible to position himself such that that cross mechanic um blood font it's called blood fountains doesn't hit people because it goes out of his shoulders out of his face and out of his butt so for tank it's possible to position it such that it doesn't hit the group which we try to achieve uh, by progressing this trial we would work on cons constantly on better positioning of planet and you can see here it just doesn't even hit us so we're super safe in here the main danger in here for us would be overstacking those shock aoes and let infusers to go off there are two infusers that needs to be stacked why we chose healers to stack those infusers one on far right that i stacked and you saw me doing that and one on far left by that shed that i went towards so another healer stacked that so basically we would switch to tant and would stack those infusers both the healers would do because we don't want to sacrifice dps for stacking and want dps to burn everything before it kills us so this is the last fight in here we switch our setups a little bit our off tank is now guarding the main tank rather than healer guarding the main tank um and we put gossamer on our healer because Gassamer has helps tremendously to survive here. Um, I put the positioning diagrams as well for different phases so you can look at those. Um, I am running already healing setup, so now I switch to healing because like, this is actually heal checks, especially executing here is a heal check. I'm running pearls because what pearls? I run a lot of magic quite a lot by spamming hands in here, so I utilize pearls very, very well and get like ultimate ex ultimate. I also put a rapids so that we can do the conga line mechanic and 
um, to send people upstairs faster. It helps kind of like doing the, the third phase mechanics very well. Once and here again, I cannot hit all the people with one it's... cast of hands because we do loose stacking to avoid like instabilities, overlaps and um, near the kiting mechanic overlaps. Like so I would have to cast two uh, cast of hands, empowering grabs, grasp it cold to apply empower. No so we are stacking and near down and we have our main tank uh, tanking boss, both the mini and the main boss. Oh, this is kind of more dangerous strategy, but when we started the progression, I asked the team, do you want to actually, you know, s uh, main tank to take everything and progress it this way, or do you want the safe strat? And people voted for like progressing more dangerous okay, strat see, and like kind of get better at the game. We decided to go with that and basically progress that strat. It didn't took us too long to be able to do this proficiently, our main tank learned very, very quickly how to do it appropriately. We went over the positioning, how to avoid Nierdal cleaving us, things like that. So, for example, during the Skanga line, Nierdal is still up. So, sometimes we would get hands mechanic uh, where we have to kite and Kanga line. So, we would have to do like small circles while positioning ourselves for Kanga line. We agree that we always go counterclockwise if we get cross, Kanga line cross the room, so that Main tank in position face near Dal. Also counterclockwise um, from his position. That way Cliff will never hit anybody trying to travel across the room to get uh, to the next congolate positions. So things like that. We discussed it, we planned it and it worked out and we got this down very, uh, very nicely. And this saved us about two minutes of the fight. If we were to stack them separately and kill near Dal first, we would get maybe 13 minutes fight time. With this approach, we get 11 minutes uh, fight time, which is kind of faster. And this fight is so long that it actually helps a lot to just shave those extra two minutes because it's just like very grueling fight just because it's so long. Here we're using, we generally use three horn three classes for this fight as well because it has phases and downtime during Kanga line, for example, we don't use ultimates because boss has uh, takes reduced damage, but <clears throat> Somebody yeah, forgot to swap <laughs> because it was a, um, you know, 36 feet run and people get nervous and things. So people forgot to swap their setups and we ended up having extra classes. Generally, I don't think Should we need that classes. We would be perfectly fine with three horn three classes set up. And that way more necromancers get to actually parse. This is the second conga line. It happens twice during the run. But this Kanga line is much easier because Nierdal is now not up, so it's much safer. We killed him before this spawned, so it's easy for us. As a healer here, we have both the healers in the center. I put the diagram earlier for, for the positioning. One healer heals inwards, our main healer and off healer heals outwards, that's me. And what I do is usually cast orb towards where we're traveling because it will travel with us, place spring towards where we're going, and once spring is down, I just spam combat prayers. Oh that way I generate the ulti because I'm low on match by that time. And I keep, keep people alive. So it's like a combination of it the... <laughs> um, uh, pearls and like, should um, I don't know. Going down and just keeping keep people alive. So it's kind of very nice to have. This and second phase, we're going down at about 70%. That, that happens. You drop down. There are all three knights with all of the three mechanics, which is the blood fountains, the prison, and crimson knight just enrages, becomes big and hits very, very hard. So here we have main tank take everything as well, because our off tank is not really in tank gear. She's like an old light. She has light body and me like um, medium um, on her jewel and weapons, which is like not really medium. It's just her jewels and weapon at PA. So she's pretty much not tanking anything in this fight, besides if um, Torturous and rage in last phase. So main tank takes everything. And what we discovered that for us it's very easy for him to take everything, stack, stack it on Crimson Knight, and us staying to the left of him because Blood Knight always faces him, right? So if we stay a little bit to the, to the left of him, the um, fountains will never hit us. So that was very easy for us to adjust that way. And we would never get hit by fountains. Nobody needs to track them. Nobody needs to see where the blood knight looks. And he doesn't need to position him in any way because 
as he turns in Blood Knight will always face him. And if we stay to his left, we will always be out of the um, fountains. This phase is very super dangerous, and I feel like the most of the like 36 feet throws would happen on this phase for several reasons, because there are still instabilities, but you're not mobile very well, because when those um, hemorrhages are applied to you, as you move, you take a ton of damage, right? And the more you move, the more damage you take. It's lingering damage. It like applies to you and stays on you for a little bit. So common mistake would be move with hemorrhage, out with instability, and then don't heal to full and try to move back in and die because the hemorrhage damage is delayed. Uh, what we're doing is we're roll dodging out with instabilities when hemorrhage fa phase takes place because roll dodge somehow counts as like one instance of moving, so it only procs one. Um, so the group, hemorrhage shield, whatever, um, instead like, of like, like however many steps you would take one stack of hemorrhage and basically okay, this done. makes it much uh, easier to survive because the furthest you can go was with a roll dodge at the lowest yes. cost of hemorrhage damage so we do that when the prison comes out and you have instabilities at the same time prison will be very very far hemorrhage and it will be hard to cleave it so that person very likely will die. So what we'll do is we we'll save a Colossus for that prison. If it's like combination for instability plus prison, we'll just Colossus the prison to make it uh, die faster. There is also um, Fountain's mechanic. The boss will summon the shadow of one of the knights and they will produce ev like every each mechanic. The boss may enrage, they could be Fountain's. So when Fountain's come up, uh, when we were progressing the trial, we would just be aware, look around, shield, block, and survive, and call it out and move out of it. But for 36 feet, we didn't take any chances. We would just, okay, if there is a blood knight and uh, fountains come out, we will just uh, basically uh, bear. Uh, another danger that could happen if you have instability, hemorrhage, and the orb in the middle is about to blow up, Orb mechanic is uh, if you let any blood clot through to the orb, it consumes the blood clot and uh, empowers itself, and it will hit harder when it eventually explodes. So if we have combination of three any kind of three mechanics together, we are highly likely to some that somebody will die in that case. So we would just basically uh, save barrier for that, just for the 36 feet fight. And when we were progressing, we did not use barriers at all because that's kind of like you should not be relying on them to survive, because that way you will be more prepared for when you finally got to that 36 feet run and you would be able to like survive better. This is the final phase of the fight. In here, the damage, ambient damage from the boss applies to every single person who is within that dome, as you can see a red dome above us. And that ambient damage ramps up the more people die, for example. So this is a very heavy healing check um, for this trial. So basically both me and the main healer of the group have to pump out as much heals as we possibly can. So uh, you can see over here, I'm more diligent Once about applying my healy tether, for example, because otherwise like people could die to lack oh, of healing. Yeah, also, there are two teams, two away teams that go upstairs and kill torturers. So boss flies up, Dom disappears, he spawns two um, dark kind of looking orbs that flow towards two of the doors um, and basically open the doors and in the door there's a torture trying to hit, hit, kill a prisoner. Uh, yeah, if you kill the torture faster, prisoner okay. doesn't die, you save him, prisoner gives you some bonus buff or whatever, like small shield or meteor starts to fall, things like that. And then um, that repeats four times during the fight uh, for a total of eight torturers plus prisoners. If you don't kill torture fast enough, he will kill the prisoner uh, and enrage, come down and try to nuke your healers most likely. So if that happens, we have uh, plan B, uh, our off tank tans it as soon as possible and starts to ro roll dodges like there is no tomorrow because she's in light armor. So, and also the rest of us, as soon as it comes down, we call for all and we roll to make sure that we don't die before she is able to take down on that uh, torture. 
In addition, we blackcast while it's up because as soon as it comes down, it will do a couple of light attacks and heavy attacks and then it will start to jump around and hit people at a random. So you have to block that. It's a very similar mechanic to what Nierdal does as well. So four phases of that, we have three people going each stairs, left and right, and then they look at those orbs where they float and make a decision where they go, communicate with one another, like go uh, go left, go right, counterclockwise, things like that, or help us because ours is far, things like that. So as they go up, up the stairs, they take ambient damage as well, and it's kind of very heavy ambient damage, so they have to shield through that entire stair so this pump shield's going up as soon as they reach upstairs they don't take the damage anymore so they can stop shielding sprint towards the torture kill it come back and as they come back as well they have to shield if they jump over the fence instead of taking the stair which is more efficient route in many uh, situations they have to shield before jumping over the stairs and then they shield as soon as they hit the ground in addition me and my co-healer try to apply radiating reg regen as they're going up so that they have extra heals and i give them rapids as they go up as well so they can get there faster and kill their torture faster um, while downstairs what happens is our tank is roll dodging heavy attacks from the boss each heavy attack produces the pool of poison you can see those like red uh, dark aoe's on the ground it produces a lot of those pools, and if tank is not efficient at stacking them, they could cover the whole area. <laughs> but eventually, right? with practice, he became so good at it that he was able to stack Yay, 20 of them together in one tiny little uh, pool. And good here job, we go, everyone. we got the achievement, and everybody's happy. <laughs>